All right, welcome, welcome to another edition. Matter of fact, let me make my note to myself. I think this is episode, yes, 26. Episode 26 of my Epic Buddies, the podcast. And before I get started, you will hear some mumbling. It is Arabic. I'm watching their TV. Um, and I can't, that's the lowest I can get it without it shutting off if that makes any sense so just ignore him (laughs) all right it's sunday okay i say epic buddies the podcast because there's a blog and the blog is at my epic buddies dot blogspot dot com and if you can't understand me um wherever you're enjoying this content Look in the more or description or details box. And there's probably, if I did everything right, there's a link to the blog. And you could just click that link. And then there's a video, a video that shows everything. And you can follow along with me. You can see what I'm pointing at. And you can see the words. And this is one that you might want to Go to the blog on so you can see the words for yourself because I'm telling you right now, there's some that are not going to make any sense. It's very good in my opinion, but it's not going to make sense. All right. So I'm a little, I'm encouraged by two of the articles I'm going to share with you. I'm forgetting something else though. The description box, anything I show is for commentary, criticism, sharing, teaching. So there's the Fairies Disclaimer Act. I believe that's it. I may be yelling because the I just talk into some earbuds that are connected to the computer and the earbuds are going out. So I have to talk loud so it will sound good. But then sometimes the it pops and stuff, you know. I know. I apologize, but that's I'm working with what I'm working with. <laughs> All right, that's it. I have some new subscribers. Thank you. Hi, hey, new subscribers. All right, so we'll get into it. So the title it is Sunday, March tenth, twenty twenty four. It's eleven eleven. Say a quick prayer. All right, Uh, so the title is Financial Digitization, a Factor to Reduce Inflation and Absorb Hoarded Funds. So, yeah, Um, and this picture that's here does not go with this article, but that was the image I wanted to use for the thumbnail. All right, so in this article, They mention, among other things, using denominations less than 250 like they already exist. So let's get into it. This is, I think this is Durgum, Durgum Muhammad speaking. Maybe not. Anyway, I think they quote a couple of different people. But... Economic affairs, economic affairs specialists, so that's more than one, have identified the most prominent advantages that digital transformation can achieve in banking, placing at the forefront of these advantages the elimination of inflation through the use of small denominations. Oh, look, I forgot to make this one red. Oh, and I rarely make words red, but this article, I made them red because as far as we know, they don't have small denominations right now. The smallest one they use is a 250, 250 dinar note, but guess what? They don't use them that much. Um, and, and they are ones that, um, deteriorate when you if you've ever seen articles of them 
saying, hey, bring in your deteriorated, deteriorated notes. Mostly the 1,000 and the 250 ones, they, I don't know what it is about them. Maybe they're older. Maybe that's it too. But anyway, now we know they had a 50 dinar note, but they withdrew that. Right? If you've been around long enough, you know that they withdrew that. Okay, so through the use of small denominations and the absorption of citizens hoarded cash mass. So that's the money they're all keeping at home. Estimated at more than 95 trillion dinars. While they praised the central bank's measures in providing the appropriate ground for achieving financial digital. Oh, I know. I can also turn that. There we go. Okay. Um. In providing the appropriate ground for achieving financial digital transformation, they stress the necessity of doubling the distribution of points of sale, which is the machines, and working to oblige all government and private institutions to operate with the electronic cards. And just as a side note, weekly they're announcing more departments, more ministries that are getting on the electronic system. All right, the electronic transformation of the use of money in daily transactions is of utmost importance in the government's directions, which is making great efforts to complete this direction after blah, 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 right? And they want to use it everywhere. Actually, they have obligated private educational institutions, universities, private colleges, fuel stations, centers, shops of all kinds, restaurants, pharmacies, private medical clinics, stores, all wholesale, all retail, right? It goes on and on and on. If you take money, doggone it, you need to have a point of sale system, right? That's what they're saying. <laughs> um, and so they haven't, but despite not having it everywhere they want it, the World Bank believes that the infrastructure for electronic payment systems in Iraq it's the best in the region. The best. And praising in a previous meeting with the governor of CBI, Ali, Ali Alak, um, for the central bank's procedures for facilitating financial transfers to different segments in Iraq. Okay, so then it goes on to talk about that. Banking digitization. Blah, blah, blah. You could read all that if you want. Here's a quote from the director of the Association of Islamic Banks. Um, in an interview, I think it's that guy. Yeah, that guy. Um, he said, technical developments in banking can help financial institutions and individuals achieve a number of positives, including investigation, financial inclusion, Security, profitability, and liquidity. Hmm. Really? Yeah, because there won't be any more liquidity because you'll be just swiping your card, right? They won't have to worry about having enough currency. Indicating that all banks in Iraq, private and government, operate under the umbrella and laws of central bank, which has achieved important steps in the field of electronic banking and has worked to provide the appropriate ground for achieving electronic banking transformation and there's more about that blah 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 okay also pointed out that guy right pointed out that the electronic transformation of banking carries a number of advantages that can be reflected positively on the economic reality in the country especially in the field of absorbing part of the citizens accumulated cash mass cash mass and look at that. It says part. They're like, okay, clearly we're not going to get all of it, so we'll settle for some. And see, the longer they drag, drag this out, the longer they tell the citizens, hey, your dinar is worth more than the dollar, right? But we want you to use your dinar, <laughs> right? And they're not, you know, they're, they're doing what they can. Okay, so... As the digital transformation will relieve citizens of the need to carry or hoard sums. It's because it's just so hard to carry cash, right? 
In addition to that, the transformation is able to play a vital role. Okay, now listen. This is the part that is in red. The transformation is able to play a vital role in reducing the high rates of inflation due to the use or parts of the currency in electronic trading. And therefore, the matter will save family sums of money that can meet other parts of their daily requirements when using electronic cards indicating that trading in small denominations of less than 250 dinars is almost non-existent. So the use of electronic cards will use those amounts, noting at the same time that the high inflation rates are the result of many global factors that have greatly affected prices, especially the Russian-Ukrainian war. We haven't heard that in a while, huh? Okay, so all of that is in red. Now, I know what it's saying. It's saying, hey, use, because right now, they're using the 50K, the 25K, the 10K. I don't see that many 5K notes, but, so it's hard to make change. And so they have to bargain okay, say they're buying lines, right? And so to, they have to get, okay, you get 10 lines, but it doesn't come to 25,000 note, but you have to use a 25,000 note and they can't give you change, right? So either the, the citizen loses out or the merchant loses out, right? That's what's happening right now. So, if they have the lower denominations, or wait, they're calling them small denominations, and had the right rate, then they could cover that, right? And we've heard them say, we've heard that they have said, and coins, but we haven't seen the coins yet, right? Well, we haven't seen the small denominations either, but I fully believe they're printed and ready to go okay so that's that part so they're saying that yeah okay you don't need the small denominations to make change because if you use the card it's the exact um amount but i think they're also acknowledging that not every place has a, a point of sale machine so there are some places where they are going to have to use cash or they're just admitting there's going to be some times in life when you're going to need cash. Okay. Oh, look, we're almost at 15 minutes. But I did want to spend the bulk of time on this. Okay, there's one more. So now they're talking to Durgum. Here we go. Durgum Muhammad Ali. And he is just a researcher specializing in economic affairs. Um. He goes on to talk about, uh, also he was saying one way you could get more people to get the point of sale machines is to give them a tax break. So, Muhammad also stressed the importance of facilitating the process of citizens obtaining electronic payment cards by spreading more outlets for selling and charging these cards in residential and commercial areas outside banks, pointing out at the same time that expanding the process of using electronic cards will achieve many positive economic factors at the forefront of which is reducing the need for annual printing of cash and increasing circulation in denominations of less than 250 dinars, which is reflected at the end of the month in the family budget. So see, see how they're kind of, they're kind of saying like they're using these small denominations now, and we know they're not. So, I think this is a little heads up about, hey, you're getting ready to get some small notes, but we can even alleviate that if you just use the electronic payment card. So, I'm happy to see that. It's very encouraging. Okay, this came out. So, that's that. Then, I may not have time to cover the other articles, but you should go to the blog and you read that and reread that. 
and see if you're getting what I'm getting. All right. So, Mashrek, I guess is how you say that. Mashrek Arab Islamic Bank opens horizons of cooperation with the largest Chinese banks. So then it has another word here. It says Levant Arab Islamic Bank. Okay. And the Chinese Bank of China. Could there be another kind of Bank of China? Hmm. Are studying ways of joint cooperation and opening new cooperation horizons that are commensurate with the needs of the Iraqi market and the commercial reality between the two countries, which is witnessing continuous growth. Wow. You didn't even see an article like this about Rafidan and Rashid Bank. But remember, I've always said the Islamic banks are last. They're the last ones to get on board with everything. So I was really happy to see this. But um, the source stated that the bank has a plan to receive Chinese companies operating in Iraq and major Iraqi companies working with China which made the guest delegation welcome this important step. So, yeah, this bank is um, really connecting with China in the country. And then maybe Iraqis will go to China and they'll have some kind of joint stuff going on there. And then the Iraqis will have a place in China to do their banking. So I thought that was really interesting. This is the last sentence. It is noteworthy that this is the second meeting after the first meeting. So is, has there been three meetings or just two? I don't know. <laughs> but the first meeting took place where? In the United Arab Emirates. Remember when they had that meeting? What was, remember they had like three meetings back to back in the UAE? So yeah, so they met there and made a little connection. All right. So here's an article about the SCOTA. That's what I'm calling that. And three benefits. And you could read this if you want. I, I read it, but I'm not going to talk about it um, because we're running out of time. Here is, I think this is the Pakistan guy, but um, same picture, I just didn't really pay attention. But listen to this, President of the Federation of Chambers of Commerce, the development path will be the gateway to economic communication between East and West. So I'm pretty sure this guy is from Pakistan, maybe not, yeah, he is. He's the Pakistan ambassador. But in talking to this guy, they talk to the whole world, right? So they're really talking about, hey, hey, look at us. We're the gateway. All right. The president of the Republic, Abdul Latif Jamal Rashid, he has four names. Iraq wants to establish good relations with America. If you want to read that, you can. Now check this out. Including a 10% discount. There's a parliamentary request for the fuel stations to increase facilities for issuing electronic payment cards. Guess what they want to do? Well, they want to, if the people get the gas card, they want to give them a 10% discount, but they want to go to their homes. Here, there's some groups to increase marketing and promotion of the use of electronic card to all car drivers, especially taxi owners, um, providing great facilities in the process of issuing the card, such as delivering it free of charge to their home. That's how bad they want these people to get on these. Right? Okay. Now, here's a little section about the Kurds. We are ready to open the bank account for the region's employees. So they're getting ready. They're getting ready to send the salaries of the government employees, right? Not all of them, but they start with the government employees directly to the people. So they have a bank open 
they're opening more banks. I, I think I read that in the last blog, but they are. They're opening more banks, and um, they were there interviewing people. He said, if we receive the data today, within 24 hours, the employee will receive the bank account, and we can issue a 1,000 cards within one day. We currently issue more than 40,000 cards through the application to our customers and have them delivered to their homes. And remember, they don't have, they have mail, but it's not, it's not like our mail here, but it's getting better. So um, then here you could watch this video. They have it in English at the bottom, but no money and high prices. Kurdistan's bazaars quiet ahead of Ramadan. Oh, and did I say Ramadan officially starts March 11th because they looked for the sun. They looked for the moon and they didn't see it because of clouds. So officially in Iraq, because Egypt started, I think Turkey started already. But in Iraq, the official time for Ramadan is March 11th, but it's sundown the night before. So it's today, March 10th, when the sun goes down. When the sun goes down. All right, here. Kurdistan's allocations and delayed projects prevent the current year's budget from reaching Parliament. So, if they send the salaries for the people, you think they might send the other government money too. I don't know, though. They're not saying that. They're not saying they're going to send that. They're just saying they're going to send the employee salaries so we'll see all right and i think that's it for the kurds here this is interesting announcing the formation of an alliance to support the private sector ding 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 and that is in quotation marks i did not put it in quotation marks <laughs> they did and these are its goals so you can read that if you'd like it's there Here's my one commercial. Get $75 when you refer a friend. And it talks about it here. And you can click the gift there if you want to go ahead and move forward with that. It's not a business and you're not selling anything. All right. Now, this article, I was going to pass this article up because the secretary of the Iraqi Communist Party. Yes, they have a party called the Iraqi Communist Party explains the details of their meeting with Sudani and they met with Sudani and they talked about various things but this part I really wanted to point out he pointed out that the party noted still high levels of poverty um someone uh, I've seen the it's a group one of those United Nations groups you know you can't Unfortunately, you can't really believe what they say. They're crooked. But anyway, um, uh, someone who's more familiar said it's like 80% of the people live in poverty. So I don't know. But not in Kurdistan. They live good in Kurdistan. Uh, it's getting a little more difficult because of this switch over. The government's fighting, I do believe. The government's fighting it, and I, I really don't blame them. But we don't have time to talk about that. Okay, so he pointed out the party noted still high levels of poverty, inflation and prices, weak purchasing power. That means, hey, hurry up and give us this rate you keep talking about. Give us this purchasing power you keep talking about, right? And some other stuff. but. Then, uh, let's see, provision of its programs, which expresses, oh yeah. So they also talked about um, f important files at the national level and the necessity of supporting the government's efforts in implementing the provision of the government program, which expresses the aspirations of all segments and spectrums of society, Iraq, and ways to consolidate the steps of development and economic reform and meet the aspirations of citizens. 
So Zidane's been meeting with a ton of people. He's flying around, meeting with different segments. That's what they call them of society. He met with the tribal people today or yesterday. He's been in Basra. He's been in different governances. So, you know, and they only tell us what they want to tell us, right? What's he really talking about? So here's this my account. They've got another update of how many people are in the Kurdistan region of the my account platform. And here are these two lovely ladies smiling for the camera and holding up their digital cards they just got probably. And uh, that's pretty interesting. You could read that if you want also. Let's see. Here, um, an Iranian official said Iran has begun to lose the Iraqi market for internal reasons. So Turkey takes Iran's place with um, foodstuffs and other agricultural product products. Um, electricity, they're getting electricity now from Jordan and somewhere else. So that's less electricity from Iran, right? Um, this person says, three months ago, I traveled to the Emirates, Iraq, and Qatar, and I realized that we were completely losing our popularity among consumers. Gee, I wonder why. Could it be because you're bombing them? You're causing all these problems for the Iraqis? Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> right with regard to dried fruits and vegetables so there's more to that article if you want to read that but i thought they should get the hint all right um so he was in basra he gave a speech and it was on tv um and some other guy too i don't know who that guy was but he spoke sadani says basra has entered the gateway to economic advancement because I guess it is a pretty big deal. They opened up. So they did a steel mill. I guess is what you call it. A steel mill. But a saltwater desalination plant. And something else. But it's been closed I think since 2013. And it's going to be the largest blah blah blah. In the region. And you know. All that stuff. So really good. Has nothing to do with the RV though, but it's good for them. Uh, here's a nice article preventing the collapse of the currency. Ellipses. Praising the government's steps to control the price of the dollar, which they have. Um, it had gone back over 15, uh, over 1500, but it's back even today. It closed because it's already nighttime there. Actually. Is it tomorrow there? No, no, no. Almost though, right? But anyway, so their closing rates, some of them had gotten to 1495, 1497.5. 1497.5 dinars per dollar, and the highest was 1525. So it has been stable, so that's good. So if you want to read this, it's, um, Pretty good. It does again say they're working to strengthen the Iraqi dinar. So there you go. They're, they're still telling the people. Um, yeah. So you might want to read that article. Uh, here they're talking about their internal debt exceeds 70 trillion dinar. So what? But so I know some people like that. So that's why I have it there. Um, I thought this was interesting. In, we're almost done. I know it's 29 minutes, including fleeing from the dollar, revealing the reasons for the rise in gold prices in Baghdad, but everywhere, right? Matter of fact, is gold open? Not yet, but it, it had gotten to like 2157, 2175. Let me see. I could check right quick. Twenty one eighty five point five. That's where it closed. So fifteen, fifteen dollars, and it'll be twenty two hundred. 
you know, I, y'all know I shouldn't be trying to do math, right? Um, anyway, it's very close. <laughs> it's very close to 2200. So no, gold is the, those markets are still closed right now, at least according to CNBC.com. All right. So this other stuff, gold in general is a commodity for saving as it is a precious metal. And at the level of central banks, listen to this. This is an Aroxman. And at the level of central banks, it is considered an investment and reserve for the local currency. So, are they saying the currency is backed by gold? Hmm. I don't know. All right. Then our goggles on. And then, um, oh, my favorite article. Sorry, I'm going to take like two minutes on this. I think this might be the last. Uh, there's some. Okay. This is another first. Baghdad seeks to restore Iraqi competencies abroad through a community conference. Listen to this. The community conference is going to be three continents. Yes, I said three continents. Okay. So, it's going to be on the 20th of next month. So, is it April or March 20th? I don't know. We'll see, though. Because um, sometimes when they say next, they mean this. So, if it's not on March 20th, then it'll be April 20th. But, gathering competencies, businessmen and merchants from the Iraqi community in Europe, Canada, Australia, and North America encouraging them to return to Iraq and invest in it. They're saying, hey, come home. Come home and grow your country. They're going to be introduced to the real reality of Iraq and remove the stereotypical image of it. Creating investment and opportunities for members of the community in cooperation with the investment authority and the governance. They're going to hold special workshops. So it's got to be like on Zoom or something, right? Or are they going there to each country? I don't know. But this is the first time this has ever happened, you guys. So it says they're going to conduct field visits for members of the community to large investment projects in Iraq. So, yeah. So, please read this. And for those of you who have people who say nothing's happening, it's not changing, here you go. Here's another thing you can show them. This is definitely the first time this has happened. And they're telling them, come home. We're going to show you the real Iraq, not what they show you on TV. I think that's great. All right, here, the first, this, this is another first. The Iraq Fund for Development present, presents its first investment projects. Now, it's not very, there's not a lot of information. And that's this uh, graphic. So they, they have this graphic out. And it's a link. Not for me, it's not. But, so it says, Iraq Development Fund Investment Opportunity. We are pleased to announce our first projects. Something Investment Schools. For more information or to apply, please click on the link. And it says, in Iraqi, between me and Iraq. So, I don't know what that means. It's, you know, that's the translation that I got. But, yeah, so there's another first. They've been building this fund and building this fund, and now they're going to start spending money from it all right and the last thing i think is hilarious good news for iraqis taking into consideration cutting off electricity during iftar and suhoor so yeah during ramadan everybody gets the same amount of electricity why only during ramadan <laughs> if you can do it during ramadan why can't you do it all year long so, I don't know. I think it's not funny. It's sad, but it's funny, right? Ugh. 
if you have a warped sense of humor like I do, I guess. And the, if I was a citizen, that's what I, I'd be like, you know, great. Thanks for giving us electricity during Ramadan. But what about the rest of the year? And then that just goes to show you. It says right here, an emphasis on fair distribution between residential neighborhoods. So that means the rest of the year, they're not distributing it fairly. That's exactly what that means. <sighs> but they expect them to pay their bill, though, don't they? Anyway, and then here's uh, Sudani. We cannot witness reconstruction and services without achieving stability. And I don't know who he said that to. Yeah, when he met with the tribal people, he said that. So, all right. It's 35, 35 minutes. Thank you for listening. It's been four days, right, since my last. That's that's what I have noted, four days. So um, since Ramadan starting, I don't know, in the past, the news has slowed down. Also, the time that the news comes out is different. Like I said, that's in years past. It may be different this year. Who knows? I know uh, Parliament's meeting, I think, Tuesday. Matter of fact, they might even be meeting Monday. But um, they have a agenda out for Tuesday also with nothing we care about is on the agenda. So they will work. Um, the stock market's open. Matter of fact, they're going to trade those real estate bonds. Construction or real estate. They're going to trade two batches starting in March. So that guy got that done. That was one of the things that the, whatever his position is over the stock market, he wanted that done. He got that done. So they're doing stuff. They are doing stuff. Um, And yeah, thanks for listening. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. So I don't know when I'll post again unless something really encouraging comes out like the two articles today but i probably will not post tomorrow tomorrow being monday maybe again on tuesday all right thank you for listening again i do this because i know a lot of people don't have time i am the contrarian voice i have no problem being the contrarian voice <laughs> i'm out here on a limb no you, some of you contact me and oh i i i agree with you i don't like what you say but when you put the articles out i see why you say what you say <laughs> and that's why i say accumulate while we wait for the rain to appreciate don't miss any meals and pay all your bills and live live life you guys don't put off things waiting for this to happen go do things whatever i know we'll be able to do more things but um if there's something you can do do it we are so close to world war three um i'll just say this there's two things that you could go and look up on your own that have nothing to do with the rv but I think i'm crazy when i say we're close to world war three they let it out late friday one of the F-35s can now be fitted with a nuclear warhead. Yes, go look that up. And China is considering for foreigners and to work with foreign countries to use cash and um, digital payment cards that are not theirs. So something's going on there that's um they because they do get criticized for being a closed uh economy and so they they're opening up but anyway those are other things that i look at but oh we're at 40 minutes okay sorry thank you for listening enjoy the rest of your morning night noon whatever time frame you're enjoying this content and until next time